everyone, it's Pat from Seattle Coffee Gear, and we're here today to do a comparison between the new Sola Scala Zero and the kind of classic Sola Scala that we've had for a while and we'll still have available. So um, these two grinders are obviously very similar when you look at them, and they're gonna be very similar in terms of their feature set as well. So the Scala Zero still has the push button here, the uh, grind adjust on the hopper twist, and a timer down here just like the older Scala model, which has the timer and the hopper twist for the grind adjust, and your start stop button and your catch pins on both. So in terms of the operation of these grinders, they're gonna be very similar. They also look pretty much the same with just some different coloring on the Scala Zero, which kind of identifies a little bit, and maybe you like the all black look a little more than the silver. So what makes these grinders different? Well, you know that both of these grinders are, if you've seen them before, are really great affordable kind of Entry level plus grinders, um, we like to think of them as grinders that can take you pretty far into your coffee brewing. Um, the original Scala is a really, really solid brew grinder that you can get started with and then really use for a lot of different brew methods. It just kind of can't handle doing the unpressurized espresso uh, on something like the unpressurized baskets in the Solus Barista Perfetta. So um, that's kind of where that grinder sits and the Zero is kind of similar, but there are a couple of things that really differentiate it and explain the, the, the difference in cost between the two. The first thing is the Zero. Uh, so the Sola Scala has some static when you pull grounds from it. This is just something that happens with coffee grounds and grinders generally. It's very hard to get a Zero static solution that completely eliminates some static cling to the catch bin and, and maybe um, to, other, to the grind chute and stuff like that. Um, it's just the nature of having coffee beans bumping into each other and bumping into burrs that just creates a lot of static and creates that sticking. Um, you can do things like add a drop or two of water to the uh, to the hopper to try to mitigate it, but it's just something that's always gonna happen and especially on more entry-level grinders. The Sola Scala Zero has, uh, through some grind chute adjustment and also through some cool technology in the chute, has sort of eliminated, for the most part, the static cling that comes with coffee grinding uh, for for this kind of grinder. Um, doesn't mean that it's 100% gone, but it's pretty close, and we'll show you that in just a minute. Uh, the other really cool thing about the Sola Scala Zero that's kind of a sort of hidden feature that you wouldn't know just from looking at the name is uh, the fact that on the fine end, there's a little more control actually across the grind spectrum. There's, there's more uh, grind settings in the stepped settings. So that means that at more medium and coarse levels, it's gonna perform pretty similarly to the original Scala. But when you get down into those tighter fine grind settings, you're gonna be able to get more control and a finer grind than you would with the, the base Scala. What that means is you can actually use this to get started with your unpressurized espresso baskets. So it makes this grinder a really great pair with the Barista Perfetta from Solus because you can actually take full advantage of that espresso machine with this grinder. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna be able to get really, really, really fine control over to pull like specific kinds of shots with single origins and, and other more tricky coffees on a high-end Italian espresso machine. We don't wanna suggest that this grinder is the, the, the perfect espresso grinder or the last espresso grinder you'll ever need, but you can start to get into that unpressurized espresso brewing using a grinder like this. So it makes this a really good grinder if you are looking for something to get started on a whole range of brew methods to kind of figure out what you like. So let's do a comparison between these two grinders and the grounds themselves so you can see how they look side by side. So the first thing we're gonna do is set them both right around the, the 15 setting which is a pretty good mid-range setting. Uh, so it'll give us an idea of what they're like a little bit on the coarser end without going all the way to the, the super coarse. So I've got them both set for about the same time. Okay, and then we're gonna run the original Scala. So I'm gonna pour this out. As you can see, they, they sound pretty much the same. There's not a lot of difference there. I'm gonna pour this out onto the plate without too much finesse or anything. Give it a few taps. And you know, we've got some cling to the, the catch bin, uh, but it's not terrible. If you were to, to sort of bang on this a little bit more, you'd be able to get most of it out. So certainly not really poor performance in that department there. 
Now let's look at the zero. So if we look, we have a tiny bit of cling up in the corner, but you definitely see less cling with the Scala zeros uh, in the Scala zeros catch bin, and um, it's it's generally a lot easier to kind of clean the grounds out. You give this a few hard taps, then it's pretty much completely clean at this point. Um, whereas if we give the original Scala some gets almost there, but you still get some cling around the corners and edges, um, which is, you know, this one still performs a lot better than many grinders that I've seen in that department, but the, the Zero definitely gets gets rid of uh, even more of that cling, and you'll see uh, more differences when we get down into the finer settings. When it comes to the grounds themselves, at this kind of higher setting, we get pretty fam similar performance from both of them. Um, I've said before I really like the grounds from these grinders. I like the way that uh, that they're pretty uniform. You don't get a lot of fines considering the uh, the pricing on these grinders of being such such an entry level price. So um, really happy with the performance of both in this range, and the slight bit of uh, of, of reduced static is really nice in the zero. So we we'll reset and we're going to run them at finer settings next. Okay, so we're all set with the grinder set to right around the four on their collars. Um, again, there's a little bit more degree of, of settings on the Zero, so um, I've got them at about the same setting, but there's a, a little more uh, more control you can get at this range with this grinder. With this grinder, so let's start this one first. Okay, and then I'm going to run the original collar. Okay. So Kind of hard to spot the difference when you have such similar burr sets, but you can see that there is generally more uniformity at this very fine setting on the, the grounds from the Zero versus the grounds from the original Scala. These are still really good fine grounds for a grinder in this price range, but the real thing that the, the control is going to give you the ability to do with the Scala Zero is while these are pretty similar in terms of their uh, their their level of quality, one adjustment on the Scala is going to change the grind size a lot more than it will on the Scala Zero. So it's really hard to show that on camera because it's pretty small adjustments, but you notice it a lot when you're dialing in these machines for these grinders for an unpressurized basket. So you'll find that you can actually get through very fine adjustments on the zero to the the consistency of grounds that your portafilter needs versus the larger clicks and adjustments on the Scala kind of not having the same degree of, um, of fine difference from setting to setting. So um, ultimately what it means is you're going to be able to get uh, really good brew grounds from the Scala still and you're still going to be able to use pressurized baskets to sort of correct for some of that um, the, the the lack of fine control, but the Scala Zero is, is gonna be able to get you into those unpressurized baskets and you're gonna have less frustration when dialing it in for something like the Barista Profeta. So um, this is a really great grinder pickup if you live in a really dry environment. Um, that contributes more to the static. So it's gonna be, it's gonna help you eliminate that static um, if you, depending on your humidity levels. Um, and then it's also going to help you get into that unpressurized basket. But the Scala remains a really good option if you're primarily interested in brew grinding and you don't notice as much of a problem with static sort of in your environment as it stands. So both great grinders, and we hope that you enjoy both of them depending on which one fits your needs more. 
Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to drop any questions that you have about these grinders below, and be sure to hit that like button and get subscribed for more content about Solus and all kinds of other stuff coming up. Thanks. Okay. Yes.